Hello and welcome to the Lily Mercer Show. I'm here with Kalela. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so it's been an exciting week for you because your debut mixtape just came out. Yes, it just came out on Tuesday um, on Fade to Mind. And do you have a favorite like cut from the album so far or from the mixtape, sorry, from Cut For Me? Um, I don't have a favorite. Well, no, because I try to make it full of things that I liked. Like, I try to make it so that there's no, like, filler. There's no, like, at least something that I'm, like, not really that into or not mm -hmm. highly enthusiastic about. So I could gush about any of the producers and any of the songs. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's quite hard to choose, like, your babies. Yeah, but. they're all, they're all, they all express different things. And all the producers sort of gave me a platform to say something else. And this was another thing that happened. There was an era where amazing R&B songs would be remixed as garage songs. So, you know, there was like Just In Case. So good. Yeah, like so there's good. some that, classic tracks. No, that yeah. Just In Case <laughs> is, is actually really important. And mm -hmm. the problem is if like the people who were listening, like if Jaheem's like main audience in the States mm -hmm. heard it, then they would be put on to, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's through that. That's a really important thing that happens that... I would say the sort of central audience of R&B in the States hasn't like really had to, hasn't gotten to experience mm -hmm. with the people that they love, the artists that they love. It's like hearing that flipped in that context is like, it makes you go har a little harder for Jaheim. Do you know it's what I'm true. trying to say? Like, it's true, it's like gateway music in a way. It's really important, you know, and that experience sort of been, or just doesn't, it's not existing in the way that yeah. it does here. It's true. It's important. And that's the thing where I kind of feel like, I mean, I don't think that you sound like remixes at all. Like your songs sound like like actual original songs, you know, but there's an yeah, element to it. Where you're going like is that. really, really sick because I, my <laughs> manifesto was basically... Jaheim? I don't want... Right, exactly. So I'm committed to Jaheim. No, I was trying to make a record of tracks that sounded like remixes, except for that's how the original song goes. Yeah. And when I say it doesn't it sounds like a remix, I didn't I don't mean like that it sounds chopped up or screwed yeah. or that uh, that it's that the vocals necessarily been fucked with. It's just the, the the quality and production. When you talk about a remix, you're talking about somebody who just works with a file. Yeah. And fucks with the file and tries to figure out how to make it better. Yeah. Basically. So remix you know, producers who are very good at remixing are often really good at reharmonizing something. You know, taking a melody outside, uplifting it out of the chords that are existing underneath it, and just like applying it to different mm -hmm. chord changes that work and recontextualize the song. I wanted to basically start at that point. Like, let's start there. So, like, if I were to give you this song, Alex, how would you flip the drums? Like, how would you make it? And that's basically the first track as a prime example. But that is sort of the approach of like, based on my ears, that's what I think is going through Ezra's head or you know mm. Kingdom when he's sitting down to make a track. It's like you are your start his starting point is subverted. Does that make sense? Like it's not in and then somebody else took it out. Mm -hmm. They're sort of starting from the place of they just wanna like they wanna make it resonate and then some twist it. Yeah. Because I saw something that said that you're already ready to re record an album. Is that something that you're kind of in that headspace yet? Or totally. I'm in the headspace of um, generating just more music, saying the next thing. Because I, you know, I, I uh, finished recording the mixtape probably in April. So I've sort of settled into, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. been a, a, a minute of sitting with the material and feeling comfortable with it and sort of like, I'm just on to this next thing. I'm really excited to make more music. And I, I have already started, but. And because you're doing um, quite revolutionary things in a way, you, your debut release, well, I think so, because your <coughs> debut release was uh, the first vocal release on that label, on Fade to Mine. Yes. So like, I, I personally think that's quite revolutionary. So how did that come about? Did it take any convincing? Were they just like, naturally, this is going to be on, on our, our label? Oh, um, it was, the idea was born, you know, in Fade to Mine. So if that makes any sense. They, they heard a song um, and were sort of imagining their 
production with that vocal and and sort of hearing she's like she's able to get with unconventional production or like she can make sense of it in some way um, and it was I was approached you know what I mean like they were like so like we are a collective of sort of, of, of producers artists who are wanting to work with you and that's sort of how it came about so on my end it was totally it was a dream a dream approaching me do you know what I mean which is like thank you universe for sending a bunch of people who make sick music <laughs> my way <laughs> or all you know each of them have their own full-fledged careers so it I mean it's obviously challenging to create that much material with a bunch of people who just have their own thing going um, but everybody seemed to be motivated to do it because it was part of everybody's vision for themselves. Yeah. Well, on that note, thanks for joining me on the Lily Master Show. Thanks this so much, Lily. Appreciate it.